Welcome back, everybody, for another installment of Balls Deep. Yes, we've gone back to that name, Balls Deep, because you know what we're going to be doing today, Brian? What? Getting balls deep in the Revenant. <laughs> As always, I'm Peter. And I'm Brian. And we're going to be getting balls deep. You know what? I cannot stop thinking about this movie. This movie was a pretty big kick in the balls. Holy <laughs> shit. This movie was just out the door right off the bat. I mean, okay, <clears throat> Brian and I both agreed that, you know, we saw a lot of people in, in the in the line because, I mean, there was a line of people that wanted to get into this DiCaprio's movie. DiCaprio's bringing the people in he, with this movie still. He, I, as a kid, I hated the guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was like that sex symbol. All the girls wanted Heart him. Heartthrob. I mean, my, my high school sweetheart, she had literally had a poster of Leo DiCaprio from Titanic above her fucking bed. I hated it. She loved it, of course. She probably sang herself to sleep every night with that poster. Anyway, um, <laughs> but look I, where he is now. Look where he is now. This He's a dirty, grizzled grizzly motherfucker. Man. He is incredible. Yes, he looks like uh, fucking Jack Nicholson, but who cares? <laughs> He is an incredible and beyond talented actor. And he shows it in this movie. Holy uh, shit. I mean, this is a performance movie. Um, his dialogue is not There's a not lot. a lot of dialogue. There really isn't a, uh, there's not very much dialogue to this movie, but it's not... Uh, and, I mean, what we've seen in a lot of movies recently is that it's not so much the dialogue that we're looking for. It's the, it's the cinematography. It's the storytelling through the images that you're seeing. And, you know, the, the way that the characters portray themselves. And you have an all-star cast. I mean, the two primary characters are Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. And those two are out of the park home run hitting actors with their with their facial features period and these two just kill it with this movie yes absolutely uh, but my point is well, sorry sorry my point know. my point going back is that a lot of these people came to this movie probably looking for an action thriller you know like a you know old western kind of gun gun slinging kind of movie I was expecting people to be sighing and complaining and talking and goofing off on their phones. I was the expecting time. a few walkouts. Too. I was expecting that too. Dead silent the entire movie. Yes. <laughs> Dead silent. And I mean, we saw like we saw older people. We saw like high school girls. We saw parents bringing their like kids. kids. Like there was an, a six year old kid that was that kid that was brought to this movie. I mean. Come on. And we're like, do you know what you're getting into right Not here? Not a peep. We have the opening scene is just incredible. It's quiet. It's serene. It's peaceful. It, you have a running, you know, running water through this beautiful forest. It's just everything. The cinem cinematic imagery is just gorgeous. Absolutely. I mean, if they don't win an Oscar or get nominated at the very least for that... Yeah, I will be appalled th with the direction that Hollywood is going. I'm oh, already they, appalled. I mean, I mean, they will. I mean, it's you got Emmanuel Lubezki Holy doing the crap. cinematography. He's worked with Alejandro Gonzalez and uh, the director Alejandro Gonzalez in Ruto. I, I think I'm pronouncing his last name. We're just going. We're I'm gonna white. call him Alejandro. I can't, I can't speak. Uh, he worked with him, obviously. Oh, last Baxter. <laughs> Uh, he worked with him last year on uh, Birdman, which uh, swept the Oscars last year, and Great. rightfully so. Great movie. Um, and the cinematography is just uh, astounding in this. I mean, you most people know the story. It's filmed all with natural light. Um, their time periods for the day where they could film were very, very constricted to like hour and a half, like when like the sunlight was enough to really film with and I mean it shows in every single frame of this I mean the action scenes are just so methodically just it's like the classic where it's like the camera's pulled back and the action just happens you know it's like there's no shaky cam there's no like quick close like uh, uh, like what's going on it's just like it's just pulled back and it's just the carnage and the rawness of the scene 
is just displayed for you. And there's what I love so much about this movie is that there are a lot of one take shots. Yes. This this is a kind of movie where uh, they did so much rehearsal, so much planning, so much design, and then they went for it, and it's just this big, broad stroke, and it the camera follows one character, follows them to the ground, goes up, follows another character, follows them to the ground, goes up, and it's just this and that and everything and you have like stunt guys in like trees that get shot and just falling fall. down and you see it all just happen in real time it's like there's no mat there that they fall on once they go past the camera yeah frame they just boom right there onto it's, the ground everything is so incredible like the not the opening scene but like the the opening sequence when you meet all of the characters all the primary characters you're going through this beautiful sequence. I mean, it's gruesome. Don't get me wrong. It's oh, gruesome. Yeah. But it is a beautiful sequence in the sense that this is all one take. It is fluid. It is coherent. There is no shaky cam because we can't stand mm-hmm. shaky cam because yeah. you can't see shit. Stop with the shaky fucking cam. Yes. This is just beautiful. Yes. And, and I mean, we know from Birdman also, it was the same thing. Birdman, the entire film is edited to look like a single take. They obviously put some digital edits in between, but it's so seamless and you'll have like at least 10 minute shots until you can kind of see where the transition is, but they flew it out so well. And you know that that previous 10 minutes was all just one. I mean, they adopt that same type of filmmaking yeah. to this. Obviously not to the extent... Uh, like extent that, to, to the extent that Birdman did because Birdman was kind of a smaller more uh, constructed isolated film in one area whereas this you have you know stunt guys oh my and, and just the, the scenery the, the landscaping everything that they did I mean it was so beautiful yes so intense I mean the landscaping everything that they shot the the mountain ranges the the valleys the rivers the creeks I mean absolutely stunning and so for anybody who is going out there to see a action thriller you're going to be bored out of your mind probably more than half the movie because there's a lot a lot of still shots there's a lot of grand view sweeps i mean and these are beautiful these are absolutely stunning shots Put your art house hat on for this. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're going to get some really intense you're scenes. Get, it's, for for those of you who are who are just going out there to see this the the, the bear scene, the whole movie is <laughs> fucking worth the bear scene. That's another thing that that was all one take. Yes, the bear is CG. We want to know how the fuck they did that because that was so intense, yeah. so intense. But it was all one take. It was all one take. How they pan across. How they. They would, they would bring the camera in and around and he'd be looking this way and you're looking that way at him looking this way and then all of a sudden you, the camera comes around and you see what he's looking at but you're still looking at him but you see what's out of the corner of his eye. And it's just so intense. So yeah, intense. Yeah, I mean, the, the camera work is just absolutely Beautiful. masterful in this. I mean, these are people that know what the hell they're doing. Um. <laughs> so yeah, hats off to you. Sir. Yes, to te- every single technical crew member involved in this movie. I mean, uh, the stories have you know come out of just what a hellhole of a shoot this was. I mean, hypothermia, people getting sick, <laughs> sick crew members just quitting because they just could not handle what the hell the conditions they were being put to. Uh, oh, I bet they're disappointed they quit. I mean, no sets for this movie. I mean, like you see Leonardo, like you know go from land to having to like jump into the river and just like go straight down you know he's probably as soon as they call cut he's gotta like they gotta pull him oh. out and get him next to like a fire oh you better believe he that passes out holy shit i want i want to know how many um how many generators they had just yeah. off of set you know like mm-hmm. they they had to have space blankets and heaters you you better believe they had so much stuff but i would love to see some behind the scenes shots of this because i mean you, you're li- they're literally out in the middle of nowhere on the yeah. mountains out in in the middle of the mountains there's no stores there's no, no 
no and there buildings. was already the stories there was no cell phone reception so if you needed to like relay information to like remember somebody you need, got sick you needed guys you needed guys on snowmobiles yeah. ready to relay like whatever information needed to be passed on i mean like I mean, it this, sounds like the most grueling this brutal shit. this is what movie making is all about yeah this, i mean this is pure like, this man right here i mean tom hardy too but this man right here holy shit the lengths that he will go to to make a film and this movie is mind-blowing yeah, I mean this. This is the kind of stuff that got me into film. Absolutely, his acting, the cinematography. This is the stuff that I would love to be known for when when I'm at his level. Oh yeah, <laughs> and oh, I want to be at his level. <laughs> you can keep that in. I don't care. But, uh, I want to be at this man's. I think level. kind of what we went back to with the audience. I love that there were no walkouts. That there was no people on their phones. Uh, this is definitely not a mainstream movie. No. This does not in any way, shape, or form follow the plot structure or just the style of any big budget movie. I mean, this is over a hundred million dollar budget movie, like right now. And like, this was just such a unique kind of experience. And I love to see so many of these different uh, demographics of audience like all like really just silently just like taking this in and i love that it's at i really hope with this film it kind of shows hollywood that you know you don't have to follow the exact same structure yeah. that has been set with every other previously successful movie that you can take a risk like this and as long as you've got the actors as long as you have the work and the payoff put into it that that's what the audience is going to attach to and that's what they're going to take away from it Oh, absolutely. I absolutely agree. The cinematography, the acting, the visual stimulation of this movie is well worth going to see it. Yes. Absolutely go see this movie. Strap yourself in. You're not going to see a action revenge thriller. Revenge is one of the themes. This is, this is a key element to the it's movie. It's definitely a key not, element but it is not. It's like, not the traditional revenge that we have all been no. brought up watching Hollywood films. This is a primal yeah. medieval-esque revenge. Yes. This is this is like one part man versus nature and for a large extent of the movie that's, that's really what it is. It's man versus nature. Then you have man versus man and then, like, man's quest for revenge. Those are kind of like the three... The three key elements real to key this man's story. Elements. But, uh, I mean, for the most part, it's good. It's definitely kind of a man versus nature uh, yeah. type story. And the fact that, you know, it's based off true events. Um, <laughs> well, inspired by. Inspired by. It's definitely worth it to see. So, getting balls deep into this shit, I highly recommend you go to see this movie. Yeah. I mean, it's it's an experience. You're not going to see a lot like it. Um, this is one of the best uh, film directors working right now. Uh, the risks and the sheer psychotic amount of work that he put he's put into his last few movies is pretty astounding. But the payoff has been uh, well worth. Well worth the, it. <laughs> well worth the. Work. So, again, unspoiled. Go see this movie. Great film. Now, <laughs> if you are ready and you're still watching. Hi, Mom. <laughs> now it's time for the spoilers. This will probably be its own video. And then I'm going to put a link at the bottom of this video for the spoilers talk. Which I think is going to happen in, uh, I don't know, let's say five, and then maybe four, three, two, one.